Welcome to Deer Feet. I'm Jess. And I'm Renee. And we're the Deerfoot Sisters. This week we're talking about parenting and we have a very special guest, our mother, Momily. Hi everybody. Woo, the crowds go wild. <laughs> so, tell us how you got the name Momily. So, my son is getting married and his fiance Ara decided that because I was my name is Emily and I am Joe's mom, she would call me Momily. So now Jessica and Renee and all of their friends and Joe's fiance call me Momily, which is great. So is it pronounced Momily or Mo Emily? It's pronounced Momily. Oh, okay. The mom is the emphasis. All right, got it. That makes more sense. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, um, Momily is basically like the mom of our friends group. Yes. So it actually became like. I'm kind of embarrassed that no one had thought of it before. It's a very clever pun. Yeah, I mean, it's a good nickname. But, yeah, so it kind of worked out perfectly because now Yeah, everyone... screw you, Ara. We wanted to be first. <laughs> no. No. Congrats, Ara. Or kudos, because that was a good nickname. Yeah. So now everyone has a name for her because, you know, they felt weird just calling her, like, Emily or Justin Renee's mom, but now they can just say Momily, and it kind of conveys more the whole attitude that she's, like, the mom as well. Yeah, so, and I used to have to sign emails to Jess and Renee and their friends, and I would say, you know, love mom and or Emily, and that was weird, so I'm glad that we ended up with Momily. Yeah, makes yeah. so much sense. So we were very close. We were on the verge of Momily with That's mom true. and or Emily. That's true. It's not it's quite as... More wordy. Yeah, it's a bit mouthy. <laughs> <laughs> Has a weird mouth feel. Okay, so we're talking about parenting this week, and we brought our special guest, Momily, on, our parent, mm -hmm. but... How do we, like, we're not really, I'm not a parent. No. So, Apparently not. <laughs> so, how would you define parenting? So, if you read our blog post leading up to this episode, then you would have read in there that we, here at Deer Feet, have a very loose definition for the term parent. So, in my mind, pretty much if you know a child and care for them, and spend time with them in a nurturing sort of environment, then I would consider you in the parenting realm. So even though you might not be a parent, you could still be engaging in parenting or child rearing, uh, even as someone like a child care worker, because a lot of times you are spending more waking hours with the child than their actual parents might be. So you could play just as, as big of a role if you don't even, even if you don't have that biological bond. Right. Mother, how, Momily, how do you feel about that? <laughs> No, I agree. I think that I have a lot of what I call my work children. Um, I guess I work with a lot of young people, a lot of people my kids' age and even younger. And I think that I see that as I see myself in a nurturing role. And I think it's not, you know, it's mentoring in the work world, but in a way it's still the same thing where you're still helping people grow and develop. Right. Still mom and... Yeah. And I mean, definitely with some of your work children you have a closer relationship than just like a mentor mentee relationship I would say I mean a yes. few of them were friends with us and they started working for you and so that kind of just naturally led to a closer relationship but I think even some of your other um employees or even like I guess sometimes kind of not necessarily your employees but young people you work with um that you develop a close relationship with you're a very nurturing person so right Thank you. <laughs> but now, do you have you ever been a person who, when a non-parent has had any ideas about your parenting style or parenting in general, have you ever felt the urge, <laughs> urge, or actually done this classic thing where you say, "Well, do you have kids?" Well, I suppose I have thought at times. I remember one time I was in school, and I was telling a story about how Renee had chewed the buttons off my calculator and uh, <laughs> and I was in, I was a single mom with three kids um you know under ages like six and under and I was in in school and this girl was like all of you know 18 years old and she's like oh my how could you have let that happen how could your how could you have let your kid chew a calculator and I turned around and I said well she was quiet for 10 minutes and I was all like you know so so yeah. I really thought in my head like you just talk to me when you're a single parent with three kids under the age of six, and then tell me what you think. Yeah. Hmm, so, I mean, I definitely think that there are parts, like being a child care worker um, and a person who's worked with kids. Like, for me, I've worked with kids for 20 years, over 20 years, 
And so you're an expert. I would say I'm an expert because I've worked with kids. I've worked with thousands of different children. Um, I've worked with some kids for years, like from the time they were three until basically I then supervised them as staff when they were like 16, 17. Um, and then even just studying psychology or taking different courses or personal uh, professional development regarding like child development and working with kids. I would say like I'm an expert in the field of dealing with children right. and working with kids. But I do understand that there is a difference when you can't get away from the child. Right. Because yeah. as a child care worker, there's always an end of the day. There's always right. a time there's where you get to clock out and leave and be like, I'm not dealing with you any longer. Right. But also as a child care worker, there's only so much you can do in terms of deciding how to raise and or discipline the child. Now, I'm not an advocate for spanking or corporal punishment, but obviously we've been in situations where we've had children who were spanked at home. And working with them in childcare, the parents would be like, oh, they don't act like that at home. And I'm like, yeah, well, we can't spank them here when they're acting up. You know, so we have to find other strategies to deal with them. If when they go home and they act up, you just hit them, then, of course, they might settle down for a little or be quiet. But we don't really have that option here. And I wouldn't really suggest that option anyway, personally. Right. Plus, another thing that happens with spanking is that kids become more sneaky about their misbehaviors. So they might be just better at hiding it from their parents. Right. Because they know if they do it in front of their parents, they're going to get physically hurt. Right. So, I mean, that's another thing. Yeah. But it's, um, it's definitely interesting. And I know I've had parents come to me before I was a parent because I'm a step-parent now. But before that, I've had parents come to me while I was working in childcare or as an educator and ask me for advice on their children. So right. at times, they can be open to non-parents offering advice mm -hmm. because you don't have to necessarily be a parent to know some good strategies for raising kids or for managing behaviors because it's not like as soon as you become a parent, you inherently get like all of this knowledge bestowed upon you. You just get it through experience. So if you have that experience outside the realm of the home life, maybe in a school setting or a childcare setting or even in the home life, because some childcare workers, if they're nannies or au pairs, like they're pretty much there 24 seven. Right. A lot of times with the kids. So, you know, you can still get that elsewhere, I think. And I do think a lot of parents are open to that. At least in my experience, I've seen that. Right. But I think it has to come if it's coming from the parent. Right. Like when you're just discussing it or parents are talking about um, an issue they're having with their kid and you offer unsolicited advice. I mean, I guess in fairness, most people don't like unsolicited advice in general. Yes. Um, cause they're usually at that point, if they're not asking for advice, they're just in a state of venting. mind where they feel like venting and they don't want to know what you think about it. But so I guess, yes, if the advice is solicited, obviously they're not going to, or I would assume they wouldn't ask for your advice and then bite your head off for giving advice. Well, but. no, but I'm just saying that, like, sometimes they do reach out and recognize, right. like, oh, this person clearly has knowledge on the subject matter, even if they're not actually a parent themselves. So. Yeah. Right, but I also think it depends on the tone in which you're sharing it. So if you're very judgmental, as the girl was in my class, you know, it's like, it's different than if somebody is genuinely trying to help you. Right, of course. That's, That's kind true. of always the case. Yeah. And I think, I mean, you guys know I'm pretty much really non-judgmental. So I really try not to judge parents. There's a lot of styles that work. The only thing I don't really condone is physical punishment just because I don't think it's an effective strategy. But there are many other strategies that work and some things work for some kids and there is a lot to be said about just knowing your kid because yes. every kid responds so differently. Some internalize things so much that even just like a talking to can rattle them, you know? So right. it just depends on knowing your kid, obviously. Also, I just think you said not effective, but I think you need to just expand upon that. Like, and the American um, Psychological Association, the American Pediatric Association, they all, like, say, they do, none of them condone spanking as a, like, useful or effective form of discipline. Um, and it's not just that it's not effective, because parents who do it, they might argue that it's effective, because, yes, their children may respond to it in the moment, but it ultimately leads to, like, negative outcomes down the line that have been proven, like, or been supported by study after study after study. And so it's just kind of like if there's a way to get your child to behave or to learn the character values you want to teach them without physically harming them, I just don't understand why you wouldn't do it. Right. Or like I remember I did a report on this back in undergrad and people, of course, were upset saying, well, I was spanked and I turned out just fine. And 
that may be the case a lot of times, but the argument was even if you're not sure if spanking causes damage, or something. there's potential that it does. According to all these studies, there's potential for all of these different outcomes. And if you could find an alternative that didn't have those same outcomes and it was just as effective, why not? Why would you risk your kid having these negative outcomes versus something that would have no risk at all? So, Right. And I think it's also because sometimes people equate not hitting your kids with not disciplining your kids. And that's also not something I would advocate. You need to discipline. You just need to do it in a loving way. Right. Exactly. The right types of techniques. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to play a little bit of a game that we put together. (laughs) So we thought of some questions um, about the three kids. We also have two stepbrothers, but... um, I didn't include them in my answers. It's okay. I didn't either. (laughs) Momly was married, got remarried when, like, 12 years, 14 years ago? 15 years ago. Okay, so I was 17. We'll be 15 years this July. Yeah. So I was 17 when they got married. So basically, we grew up the majority of our lives as just the three of us siblings. Right. And then our two stepbrothers came into the fold when I was, like, leaving high school. When we were basically Yeah. Grown. So our the siblings are myself, Renee, Jess, and Joe. Is yeah, our, our older brother. So Joe's the oldest, Jess is the middle, and Renee's the baby. Yep. So we have just some questions. Uh, we already answered them so that we could move through them kind of quickly, and if there's any, like, contradictions in our answers, or we'll just, dis- <laughs> like, have Momly or whoever describe, like, what they thought about it. So the first section is um, questions about us from ages infancy to two years old. Okay. So who cried the most? Joe. Oh, I, I Jess. said Jess. <laughs> Actually, I wrote Jess question mark because I really didn't know. I didn't know, and it was so funny because while I was thinking about this question, I was like, well, I don't remember crying much as a baby. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, well, obviously I went into ages zero to two. <laughs> so uh, that was pretty embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> Awkward. So Joe the most. That's interesting. I thought he slept all the time. Uh, well, yes, but when, when I mean, I didn't count sleeping. I didn't count the hours of the day. Mm. I meant, you know, when they were awake. You know. um, oh, so he was, like, fussy when he was awake. He was a little fussy. I mean, I, maybe it was my first child, and, and he, you know, he, he just, yeah, he, he cried a little bit more than you two. Mm. Renee, Renee was really easy. She almost never cried. Yeah. Mm. No. All right, the next right. question is, who was the biggest? I said Jess. So did I. Jess, I know. Jess was <laughs> You've seen the big baby <laughs> pictures. I was the big baby. Very yeah, you chubby. were. You had extra time in the oven, though. <laughs> yeah. She did. She was a week late. So we yeah. popped out early, yeah. so. That's true. <laughs> All right. Mom, you want to read the next one? Okay, so who was the cutest? I said Renee. Me too. I said Renee. Ah! Honestly, you all looked so much alike when you were babies. It can be very it's hard like to tell you apart. over here. <laughs> No. It can be very hard to tell you apart in the pictures, except Jess was born in the summertime, so it's a little yes, easier to pick her out. So. And, and there's I like had the other horrible kids. picture of us like <laughs> by the lake, little like pond thing that was by our house, and like the way my mom's holding me, like I have a horrible camel toe. Camel and I was, like, toe such extreme. A chubby like were you even wearing a diaper? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> it's, like, so I don't bad. even know what the I'm like one a year old, on. and it was just really, really bad. Yeah, that was crazy. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so wow. we mostly concurred on baby stuff. Yeah. So then the next questions are for ages 3 to 10. So more like the toddler to child age. Yeah. Or school age, child age. School age children. Okay. Mm-hmm. Who was the best behaved? Joe. Oh, oh. I said Jess. I put oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know why? Because he was so quiet. <laughs> he was very quiet and he never wanted to get in trouble. <laughs> and I feel like I was like, okay, well the next question is who is the most helpful? Is that one Renee? Renee. Okay. I said Jess. <laughs> What? <laughs> Three to ten. You know, I was always like. I was gonna. She go- was always. She was always trying to get something. But I was like sister. mama's little helper. Yeah, you gonna, were. It's, you were. I was gonna write Renee, but then I changed it to Jess. But <laughs> it was not Joe. <laughs> and for best behavior, I guess at the younger years, because I was trying to think of like what he was like at home, because he was kind of a jerk. <laughs> Later. From, from three to ten, though? I don't really Maybe think Maybe, like, was. around eight. I mean, I didn't really know him that much in that time. That's true. Three to you ten. Were younger. But yeah, I was very little. All right. Who did best in school? Joe did best in school. I put Joe. I put Jess. You're really self-centered. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe from three to ten. I, I mean, you were probably pretty equal, you and Joe. And actually, Renee, too. Y'all did really well in grammar school. I feel like no. Joe never did the best in school because he never did any of his work. But three to ten, he probably did his work. Yeah. 
I mean, he didn't, didn't really do homework. homework. I know in sixth grade he didn't do any of his homework. He did not do his homework in sixth grade or okay. seventh. Who got but sick the most? Think. I said it was pretty even. I don't think any of you. I yeah. mean, Joe yeah. got weird things because he had appendicitis and salmonella poisoning. And in potato. Yeah, well, gross. he was a wrestler, so that's not uncommon. <laughs> a wrestler. Um, I said Joe. I yeah, said Renee, I, question mark. I had no idea. Yeah, I think that you all were pretty, you were pretty healthy. Yeah, yeah we didn't really get sick We didn't get sick often. I did throw up once at school. It was like one time. <laughs> it was after lunch, and I did it right at my desk. It was before I learned how to throw up into appropriate receptacles. <laughs> I and on my desk too. It was like all my like half eaten French fries were like on the table. Mm. That's, it goes like, around mm, you. Chunky. <laughs> you also threw up once at Fancy, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And your half eaten Caesar salad <laughs> threw up into the bread basket or whatever it was. Yeah, it was my Caesar salad and um, that Rice Krispie treat that I've had. Yes. So that story, I'll just tell it really quick. I was really drunk one night. I broke, I tripped over a tree root and I broke my left foot. Uh, a bone in my left foot. My fifth metatarsal, in case you were wondering, or you like bone stuff. Anyway. The pinky bone. I was rather hungover, and I was sitting at the urgent care for a few hours, and Mommy went home and grabbed us some snacks, Rice Krispie Treats, so we ate those. <laughs> Great for hangovers. And then I told Renee, like, I'm really nauseous, like, maybe you can get me, like, a bag or something. So she goes to the nurse's stand, and she's like, oh, my sister's feeling nauseous, and like, why is she nauseous? Nauseous, and... Renee's like, well, she's hungover. So then they give her this Petri dish. <laughs> and Renee's like, what the heck is I'm she looking at them like, what is she supposed to do with this? Throw up all over herself? And the nurse is like, oh. And she, like, punches her hand through it. And it's this long tube bag. So yeah. they could, like, measure how much right. vomit she had. But basically. it was so funny because if you had never seen it, you were just like, why are you handing me this, like, And like, I didn't even say anything. No, like, I think my face was just like, what the hell? And the lady's like, oh. And I'm like, yeah, why would you give me this, like, literally, like, a Petri dish? Like, what am I supposed to do? How is she supposed to throw up in this thing? So we leave there, and we go to this restaurant, like an Italian, like, kind of casual restaurant. And we're the only people there. It's, like, mid-afternoon. There are a couple people in the restaurant. And we eat, and then I'm like, oh, I'm going to be sick. And I also, like, couldn't really get around easily because at that point I was, like, on crutches, non-weight bearing. So it's kind of difficult, especially because I'm not the most athletic person. So I threw up right at the table into the bread bowl. And I'm a very loud vomiter. And also the restaurant was, like, a warehouse-style restaurant, so there were, like, huge ceilings, you know, great acoustics if you want people to hear the resounding sounds of your vomit. So then Renee leaves and tells the restaurant staff, like, oh, my sister just threw up at the table into the bread basket. Yeah, and they're like, it's fine, it's fine. I'm like, I'm not, can you just take the vomit? <laughs> it's, like, at our table. He's like, I'm not apologizing, I'm just letting you know we have a basket of vomit at the table, and we are trying to eat our lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so they took it, and then I think we finished lunch. No, you guys brought me home. Oh, you brought okay. me home, and then you went back and ate because I was just like, oh, man, I got to go to bed or whatever. Yeah. But gross. anyway, I got a walking boot a few days a few days later, so it was fine. Yeah. So then she could hobble to the bathroom to vomit. Yeah. As needed. Right. All right. All so right. moving on. Now we have questions about our teen years, basically tween and teen years, yeah. ages eleven to eighteen. So basically middle and high school is how I, like, gauge this one. Yeah. All right, so the first question is who is the most expensive child? So I was really having a hard time with this. I was thinking, like, I said Joe because, remember, we sent him to whale camp, and that was really expensive, but which is for studying whales, not for fat kids, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that... I put Renee because of the sports. I put Renee. She did kind of like expensive Uh, sports. Maybe. Because I did horseback riding and scuba and. I mean, diving, but is that expensive? I don't know. Yeah, the equipment is expensive. No, diving is. And scuba diving. Oh, the scuba diving. (laughs) Well, no, diving was relatively expensive. Yeah, because you guys like join the club or whatever. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably, it was very expensive. I needed all the equipment of my body. That's probably true because of the sports. Yeah, that's what I put too. Because you guys weren't very big. You didn't spend a lot of money on clothes or anything, and we weren't maybe, allowed to. Well, we didn't. We <laughs> we we didn't have a lot of money. I was a single mom. We were allowed to get jeans only if they were less than twenty dollars, which isn't always easy to find jeans less than twenty dollars. No, we were able to. We were allowed to buy like three pairs of jeans a year. We went shopping in like August, and we bought three pairs of jeans, and then like some shirts. And I remember. When Renee became, I never cared about brands, and I was never a person that wanted, I always was like, I'm not wearing a brand on my shirt, you can pay me to put your brand on, your brand name on my shirt, I'm not doing free advertising, and it was like Aeropostale or whatever, Mm -hmm. right, and you wanted the t-shirts and you argued with mom because the shirt was like $25 for a t-shirt and you guys had like a big fight about it at the mall because 
You were like, you don't understand me, mom. She's like, well, you also have to understand where I where I was in middle school at the time was an extremely rich, extremely exclusive, clicky town. So when you were in middle school, when you started middle school, you weren't really in that kind of environment. And I was already being I was, excluded. but I think it was just the way I was because it was a similar environment. And I mean, I remember, so flared pants were like all the rage. <laughs> Um, like, bell bottoms or whatever. Like, the super f- extreme flares. Like, now I think all I really see is boot cut. But that was like, oh, man, no, come on. Yeah, you need Go flare for it. Jeans. Get the flare. <laughs> so, I had, like, basically before that, when I first moved to this new town, I had, like... You mean new town? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the new town was called new town. I had, like, relaxed fit jeans that were just, like, super... Not cool. And also, on the first day of school, I got dressed up. Because where we went to school before that, everyone got really dressed up on the first day of school. So I was wearing a dress that I'd worn to my uncle's wedding in the summer. I'm really We pull up, and I was like, Mom, you need to bring me home. Like, I'm not walking into school like this. Because everyone's just wearing shorts and tank tops, and, like, no one's dressed up. But, I mean, I made friends. And then, like, the next year, I got, like, flared pants. And they're like, oh, my God, you got flares. And then my friend was like, yeah, we thought you were a total dweeb the first day. (laughs) But, I mean, I guess they just saw past past it. Or I was like, whatever. I'm just going to, like, work it. Work with it. Like, I'm not going to cry about it. It's so weird about the clothes. Like, I remember, too, when we moved there, they told me, like, I always wore dresses. And I'm like, that's not even true. Because I remember I would go on the monkey bars a lot and stuff and, like, go upside down. And I wouldn't do that in a dress. And they're like, yeah, you wear dresses all the time. And I'm like, I literally don't. Like, I wear the jeans. The first day like, of school you wore one, I'm sure. I probably wore a dress, like, every now and then, maybe. But I'm like, I didn't, like, wear dresses. I'm like, hello, I'm a girl. Like, sometimes we wear dresses. It was weird. I don't yeah. Know. Whatever. I don't, I don't know. know. It was bizarre. Anyway, okay. So, who did you worry? Who did you, Momily, worry about the most? I worried about Renee the most. That's what I wrote. That's what I wrote. Yeah. Well, I wrote Jess or Renee. But I figured it was Renee. Why would you worry about you? Well, I don't know, because remember, I was, like, calling all those people I met online and, like, racking up the phone bills and, like, being very dramatic. Nobody remembers that, because you're the middle child. So you know, <laughs> no, everything I you do. that, and I did worry about you, but Renee was pretty depressed and yeah. had some serious trouble at school, and yeah, I was I was the it. messed up one. No. Yeah, don't try to take it from me. Yes. <laughs> but you were also the most helpful. <laughs> when I was 3 to 10. <laughs> okay. All right, then the next was, who was best behaved, ages 11 to 18? Joe was best behaved. Ooh, really? I put Jess. I put Jess slash Joe. I put Jess. Really? You remember? You, like, used to call all those guys up. And, you know, <laughs> oh, I didn't we just talk about that. Watch yeah. a lot of pay-per-view and things that, uh, yeah. That was actually was after like 18. When she was in college. You have to differentiate between things I did after I was 18. Yeah. And that's hard, though. It's hard to remember exactly how. Okay. When but, we lived at Uncle Al's house. Okay. Anything. Because after that, it's pretty much when I was 18. Okay. I lived okay. in Uncle Al's until I was Well, you 18. definitely were calling guys. I definitely called people, yeah. But, like. And this was when phone bills, you know, still cost. Yeah, like, still it cost money. money. Phone like, it wasn't, like, but then I got a cell phone, whatever. But, um. <laughs> a Milo. <laughs> Joe. I don't remember that. But that was after 18, though. <laughs> that, I mean, we have to seriously address that. I feel like I probably had, like, psychotic moments. I'm I don't sure you know. did. Because I don't remember stuff. When I, like, tells me stuff I did, and I was like, I don't even remember that. And I don't know if it I'm It was blocking. weird because you, like, got that thing. <laughs> It was like a, it was called a Milo. It was like my life online, and then you like hid it in the closet, <laughs> and I don't even think you ever used it, unless you just got it to use it in the closet. Because like, why would you tell me about it and then not tell me about when you used it? It just seemed weird. It was like a really weird. Is it like a video? No, it was like a, it was like a cell like a phone. Thing. Yeah, like, like a sidekick cell phone. I don't even know. It was weird. But that was when we lived in Chatham, right? No, I think that's when we lived at Uncle Al's house. No. Something like that wouldn't have really existed moved, at that time. Maybe when we moved to Chatham. Okay. So anyway. Um, but Joe, like, think about how he was, like, at home. Think about how destructive like, he was. Like, he was, like, so violent with us. Like, he was, like, always beating us up. <laughs> yeah, and, like, punching Back holes in us the in walls. the face <laughs> at a blockbuster. It was West Coast video. <laughs> no, it, was block- <laughs> it was the blockbuster by the Village Pizza right in Chatham on Main Street. Was mm-hmm. that a blockbuster? No, I think... It, oh, oh was okay, Coast maybe video? it was... I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't know. You know, they used to have these things called video stores <laughs> where you would rent video videos. rentals. <laughs> yeah, so basically... Um, I, you know, we got to tell that story, though, really fast. I know a lot of our listeners have heard it, but some of you haven't. 
So basically, uh, Mamalee and I were having some kind of argument, like a classic teenage, I was like 16. We'll, we'll get I to was, that later in the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I must have been 14 or something. And so I've been crying, and because I was like crying, I was wearing sunglasses, and it was like dusk going on evening. And Joe and I were picking up a movie at either West Coast Video or Blockbuster, some video store. And I feel like it was Blockbuster because he always got Blockbuster gift cards. So okay. we were like using one of his gift cards. And I picked out Never Been Kissed because I was like, oh, we were like, time to pick. And I was like, oh, let's get this. I really wanted to see this, blah, blah, blah. So we get it. And he's like, he was like, whatever. He wasn't very confrontational in public. So we got the thing. And then when we get outside, he started like yelling at me about picking that movie and how he didn't want to see it. And he kind of, like, pushed me, and then I was like, don't push me, and then he backhands me across the face <laughs> in the parking lot. So then this guy, who has, like, a three-year-old son, walks up, and he's like, are you okay? You want me to call the cops? And I was like, no, it's fine. It's fine. And then he, like, gives my brother a talking to, like, listen here, buddy. Um, if you ever, like, hit her again, like, I'm just going to, or he's like, if my son wasn't here, I'd be beating the shit out of you right now, like... Don't ever right. touch women Because again. she was wearing sunglasses that night. Yeah, so I looked like crying. a battered woman or something. Yeah. He probably thought we were lovers or boyfriend. I know. I always use the term lovers. I'm sorry. <laughs> boyfriend, girlfriend. He thought we were dating. He didn't know we were just siblings and that I hadn't been fighting with him. Which doesn't make it okay. Right. I don't think people should be <laughs> violent with their siblings. And it's not either. like Joe looked like he was like 25. Like when he was, well, he's probably like 16 at yeah. the time. And he probably looked like he was 12. Right. So he didn't look like a grown man that a grown man should be threatened to like beat up. <laughs> but he probably didn't look 12. Like he was tall enough. Know. Like he was probably like five six or five seven. Like yeah, okay. he's never been well, small. He's a beefy boy. I mean, that's true. <laughs> Shout out to the beefy boys. <laughs> what did you say? The fat boys. <laughs> Don't tell them that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the fifteen percent lean beef boys. <laughs> yeah. All okay. right. Anyway, so so then my mom pulls up and basically she sees. So then Joe starts crying. Yeah. Yeah. She sees Jess crying and then Joe also crying and she's like what the hell I was gone for 10 minutes what happened at this blockbuster and both my kids are crying hysterically outside the video store so yeah. it's one of our favorite uh, classic Joe stories <laughs> so who was the best behaved <laughs> probably Renee <laughs> No, no I we were was all, really bad. We were all just equally bad, honestly. <laughs> I think we were just typical. We were, you were differently bad, though. <laughs> yes, <laughs> separate but equal. <laughs> Some people were more secretly bad. Yeah. All right. So the next one was who broke the most rules? Renee. I put Renee. Renee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was the bad one, and she was very sneaky about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm still sneaky. <laughs> I'm not overtly bad. She's like making a sneaky face. People think I'm such a good person. And I'm like, I'm really not. I'm like, yes, you are. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm regular. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely broke the most rules as a teenager. Then you said who broke the most bones, and I said no one. I no don't say I said bones. no one. <laughs> no one broke yeah. the bones. <laughs> I'm the first person that broke a bone, right? And it was my my fifth metatarsal. Well, you guys don't actually know this, but I did break a lot of bones that age, just not my own. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bone crusher. Just breaking bones all over the place. Bones and hearts. Animals or peoples? Peoples, of course. I'm not wow. cruel. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> no, I didn't actually ever break anyone's bone. At least, I don't think I breaking did. Breaking boners. <laughs> Ew, gross. <laughs> that sounds really painful. All right, wow. the next question was who did the best in school? For this one, I put Joe. I put Jess and Joe. I don't know. I put Joe, but... It depends. In 11 to 13, I definitely did better than Joe because he was, like, not doing well at all because he wasn't doing homework and he right. it counted. And homework back then, like, at least where I teach now, we don't really give a lot of homework. But back then it was like if you didn't do your homework, that was a significant portion of your grade. Right. Which is stupid to me. And Joe's very smart and he was – and he did know. He started actually doing his work when he got to high school because he was basically like, my grades before high school don't matter. <laughs> He's like, colleges don't look at that stuff, which my 14-year-old cousin just told me today. He's like, no one cares what you get in middle school. I was like, yeah. oh, are you going to try in high school? He's like, yeah, I'm going to keep more in high school. The people that care are the people in high school. So if you right. want to get into good classes in high school, you have to do well in middle now school. Now you just wave up. <laughs> yes, do whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, now you can just wave. I think well, I think it was harder when we were kids. It was hard. I had to they fight hard They were very, like, for... strict. Like, your child doesn't belong in honors. It's like, calm yeah. down. Yes, she does. Like, when I wanted to move to honors English in ninth grade, and my teacher, I almost said professor, my teacher was like, well, your grades are blah, 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 and if I let everyone who had a B move up, 
everyone would move up. And I'm like, but does everyone want to move up? And then I just moved anyway. Sorry, Mr. Chupka. <laughs> <laughs> but he was the English teacher. Yeah, so for Honors English. Oh, so he was the one who was... Oh, because he wasn't recommending you for Honors? Yeah, and I asked to be moved up, and he said no. But I'm like, I don't know. I feel like Just if you had... Them. If you had done... Especially because if you had looked at my work, you would have known that I was more than qualified as a writer to move up. It was just clearly that, like, I didn't have the the work ethic. Check out some samples of Renee's writing on DearFitSisters.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, um... Who cried the most? Jessica. I brought all of us. <laughs> oh, I brought Jess and Joe. Yeah, Joe cried so much. But he, I definitely cried more, I'm sure. You cried But he cried a lot time. for, like, a teenage boy. Cried a lot. <laughs> I think I said you guys cried more than me. I think you did. Yeah, well, I'm you, sure. You, like, you had no emotions. You're so Renee. emotional. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a robot. Who was I mean, one? I cried. It just, like, didn't show you when I cried. Mm. You did it in the closet with your Milo? Yeah. I cried online. Digital tears. Mm. But, yeah, Joe cried a lot. He would cry when he was angry. He would cry all the time, pretty much. Probably at least, like, twice a week he would cry. Mm. And you cried a lot, too. Yeah, I'm very emotional. And then the last question for this age bracket was, who did mom fight with the most? I put Jess. So did I. Jess. <laughs> It's so and funny. it's still true. <laughs> yes. Is it? I mean, they don't fight as much now, but they would have the, like, knockout, drag out. What is it? Knockdown, drag out, fights, screaming mm. matches, you know, top of the lungs. And Jess is like, she does not let a fight end until everything's completely resolved. So if you're like, I need a five-minute break, she's like, no! You can't leave! We're so fighting! And I'm like, oh my god. And then you're just like, I want to pinch you. One time we were fighting and I'm like, I just need a few minutes. And I'm, she's like following me into the bathroom and she's like screaming at me. And she goes, get out of my face. And I'm like, you literally followed me <laughs> into the bathroom. Oh, I was trying to get out of your face. Yeah, I was okay. just trying to get onto the toilet. Wait, let's skip to the last question. So... Mom Wait, why? There's only one other question. No, I know, but I wanted to, I feel like I want to ask this one next. And oh, then, okay. Mama, like, who's your favorite child? All of you are my favorite child. <laughs> See, I could have written that's what she would say, but I put Jess. I put Jess also, Avi. I mostly put that because it makes Jess feel really good about herself. It's really Joe because he's the one who lives furthest away. No, that Joe's makes Joe's definitely sad. your least favorite. <laughs> Oh, and actually, I had another one, but this was a surprise question because I wanted to get your true reaction. Who is your, which podcast do you like better of your children? Oh, that's so unfair. <laughs> hmm. Well, since um, I, I love listening to the Beefy Boys and I love listening to their interactions, but they talk about three things that I'm not particularly interested in, so I would have to go with the Deerfoot Sisters. Oh, yeah. High five sound. Um, sorry, Joe. Maybe if you talked about <laughs> books on tape and <laughs> <laughs> seltzer, then she would like your podcast. Better. Oh, they did talk about seltzer. Yeah, that's that was true. A lot of fun. Yeah, so, and they talk about to, movies. You have to instead of doing a Lacroix, you have to do a Poland Spring lemon seltzer because that's the one she likes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I prefer my seltzer in bottles, not cans. <laughs> yes. And she prefers her seltzer in bottles because bottles have lids that you can close. And she drops her seltzer at a remarkable <laughs> amount of times. For someone who drinks, I mean, I guess since she drinks it so much, it makes sense she drops it so much. Yeah, more but than the average bear. I, you could probably make a compilation of mom dropping her seltzer and it would be like at least two hours long. <laughs> we are members of a Girl Scout troop. And we were on a Girl Scout camping trip. And Momly, what was the first thing she did? I don't even know. She bumped into something. No, it was, there was like a thing earlier where she had dropped her seltzer. Like at the campfire. I don't remember. I Whatever. Remember something had happened one. that was like a little awkward and then like the kids were like kind of laughing. But like in a good hearted teasing way because the girls are, they were like 10 around the time. Yeah. They're like teasing her a little bit. And then the next day she dropped her <laughs> seltzer. She dropped her seltzer bottle and it. Like, fell straight down, so it hit the bottom, and then the force caused, like, all the bubbles to make the seltzer erupt out of the bottle, so she, like, dropped it, and she <laughs> bent down to pick it up, and then Excuse it erupted me. in her face, and then she leaned back to get away from it and hit her head on, like, a fire extinguisher, <laughs> and it was just, like, so bad. It was as soon as all the parents had arrived for this 
show the girls were putting on. So it was just like so classically awkward that we were like, oh my god. And then the girls are like, they're like, Emily, you keep dropping things and hitting your head on things. And it was just like so, so classic. I am pretty uncoordinated. It was a really great one. But I'm a great dancer. (laughs) Truly, truly great. We do love to dance. So the last question that we skipped uh, was what's what's the best family vacation we ever took? What would you put? I put Disney World. Which Which one? Which one? Well, so here's the thing. (laughs) I actually like the time that we went when um, when Mark came home from serving in Iraq, but Joe wasn't with us, so mm. I kind of feel bad about that. So, but that's probably my favorite time that as yeah, a, that one like a big family fun. vacation. Are you referring I, to the time that David punched Eeyore? Okay, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that did happen. But um, but we were all there, and it was kind of the first time that we really did something with Matthew and David, our, my stepsons, yeah. and mm. I thought it was a lot of fun. And I'm sorry that Joe wasn't there, but. A uh, second close is the cruise, so that, that which was cruise? which cruise? I would say again the second one when we were there with um, oh, the reunion cruise. The reunion cruise. Oh yeah, that I was that very one. fun. I wrote um, Hawaii. Same. Uh, or one of the cruises. I w- I put Hawaii, and then I kind of forgot about the cruise, the reunion cruise where everybody was. That would probably would have been a good choice. But I also put Disney Universal 2016. That was very which fun. wasn't really a family vacation, I guess. In <laughs> retrospect, it was just. Us. Well, the only person who wasn't in the family was Eileen, but she's in the family. But basically. Joe wasn't there, and Mark wasn't there. Well, like, wasn't I told the Renee family. that it was it had to be at least the three of us. So I thought that trip was really fun, um, because it was just like everyone was so happy. And I just loved Disney. And Disney was fun the time we went that you were referring to, but I think I was like, I don't know, I was only like 14, and I didn't enjoy it as much. You were like I think, 16. I mean, it was really fun. <clears throat> I don't know. I enjoyed both. But I think, yeah, like, when we got I home, think also, like, it. staying in 2016, like, we stayed at, like, the parks. So that, yeah. I think, adds just an element to make the vacation, like, more And it was our first time fun. at Harry Potter World, which was That's a true. lot of fun. That was really fun. Yeah, because And all, our road trip was a lot of fun, too. I thought that was fun. Yeah, it was, yeah. Like, it was fun. A, a different trip. But that was not... I was thinking more, like, with the... Full more of the whole family. Yeah, yeah. I think probably the reunion cruise would have been one of my favorites then. Yeah, that because that was, was like fun. the whole family, and then a lot of it, the extended friends, and yeah. we were like old enough to drink and stuff. So it was like the like the wedding cruise was fun too, but I was like twelve, <laughs> so yeah. it was like as fun as you can have on a vacation when you're twelve, <laughs> right? Plus, when we did the reunion cruise, it was like you said, it was our friends, our family, our extended family, our family's friends, but then also, like I said, our friends. Yeah, so it was so like it was more everybody. people we knew. And we were of the age to actually fully enjoy ourselves. And my third choice was going to be the Hawaii trip because that was just, it's just Hawaii. So Yeah, I that's kind of why. Like, like Hawaii was the best because it just is such a great place to go. And there were so many, like, funny things that happened, like the guy holding the sign that said coffee. Yeah. Just, you know, <laughs> or you being afraid of sea turtles. I was not afraid of sea turtles. They tried to turn over my kayak. <laughs> they don't do that. They don't do that. They're really big. But can I just say, Jess, I'm surprised mom kayaked. <laughs> like based on our experience ocean kayaking yeah it's difficult yeah you couldn't do it I guess I'm less well it was a two her. person kayak oh so, so was Mark, Mark doing Mark... all the work no I was helping mm, helping or hurting because when we kayak together Renee always says just stop paddling and I just sit there I had and to she because everything. you were like, working against me I was no like, we were stop. working together we were working okay. together until the sea turtles came but you know you remember what morning. happened when we were trying to get out of the ocean right Mark it, flipped her over and then hit her across the face with the kayak. And then the sea turtle came up and smacked her. <laughs> no, but you know how you're, you're coming in and they tell you to have the waves kind of push you in. And I'm like, I think we should get out. I think we can stand here. And he said, no, let's just take one more wave. So the wave came. It capsized the kayak. It hit me really hard across the arm. It hit me in the head. I was Wait, like dizzy. you're using too many pronouns. Sorry. Did the wave hit you on the arm? No, the kayak. Oh, okay. So the kayak hit me on the arm. It hit me in the head. I stand up. I'm like discombobulated. I think I'm going to throw up. I think I might have a concussion. And Mark turns to me and says, you might want to do something about your hair. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. I married him anyway. Classic. (laughs) Were you guys already married? No. Oh, yeah, because I was in Speaking of hair and the ocean, one time Jess was at the beach and she saw a lady trying to fix her hair and she kept like one piece of hair was like out of her hair clip and she was like oh and she went to put it back in but what she didn't know was it was actually just a piece of kelp that was stuck in her hair <laughs> yeah, that's that's kelp yeah that's where kelp head comes from so. one of my classic screen names but yeah kelp head was, was your screen name yes kelp head yeah. 02 interesting yep. interesting <laughs> 
All right. All right. So that's it for the Mommy game. The newly burst game. <laughs> so so creepy sounding. I hoped you wouldn't have said that. Well, you didn't remember your birth. I mean, you do. <laughs> you cried a lot. <laughs> I'm sure. Renee also didn't remember that she had her brain removed. Yes, an operation I had when I was a baby. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. So, now I guess we'll talk about, like, some of your parenting wins, or as Renee calls them, your moments. Yeah, and as Jessica calls them, your parenting wings. Mm. <laughs> parenting wings or parenting wins. So, what are some of your parenting wins, would you say? <clears throat> well, Besides raising amazing slash. sisters. I was going to say, I mean, I raised <laughs> pretty amazing kids that you can hear on various podcasts, such as the Beefy Boys and Deerfoot Sisters. It's called Deer Feet. Oh my <laughs> God. I'm sorry, Deer Feet. Deer Feet. Do you even love us? <laughs> you know, it's really hard because podcasts are very new for me. Anyway, um... I think that the best thing that happened to me was just knowing that you guys would come to me when you needed something. And even though sometimes we would argue and fight, I felt that most of the time you knew you could come to me with things. And I know I realized later on, especially after listening to last week's episode, that you didn't always tell me everything that was going on. Well, of course. And, uh, you know, but I think that when push came to shove, if you really needed something, you knew that you could come to me. And that means a lot. Hmm. And I, I think so when too. my stepson came and lived with us and he moved in here when he was 15, which is a tough time to come to, you know, to move. He moved from Georgia up to New Jersey and he told me that he found that he told me that he really appreciated everything that I had done for him even though at times it it was a difficult transition. So that, you know, when your when your stepchild can really talk to you like that that's yeah. a great moment I mean I think as a step parent as well there's something so much more I feel like when you're a step parent and you get that validation from your kid yeah. from your step kid or kid as I call them because yeah. you know when it's your kid you know they're gonna love you but with a step kid you have to work a little harder to earn that love sometimes and I know like one of my like happiest moments is when my stepson would reach out and hold my hand without me having to ask him you know like yeah. we were out we were picking strawberries one day, and we were just hanging out, and then we were leaving, and he just reached out and held my hand, and I was like, oh my god, he loves me. <laughs> then we get in a fight when he yells at me that I don't know how to play video games. So it's like, it's a give and take, but it is. <laughs> overall, What did he say to you know? that one time where he was like, stepmom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was like something about, oh, and then you can get one for your mom. He's like, do you mean stepmom? I was like, still a mom, still counts. <laughs> And then you just went in your room and cried. Yeah. Well, and then he did for a while, like, ask if he could call me mom. Yeah. And I was like, sure, bud, whatever you want. And at the same time, on the inside, I'm like, oh, my God, it's finally <laughs> happening. But then he went back to calling me my nickname anyway, so whatever. Yeah. Nay, nay. I think with us, it's a little different because we were, I've been in his life since, pretty much since he can remember, because yeah. he You're was three, right? just turned three when I met him. So he doesn't really have memories before. Right, like, and he's got a lot of parents because he has a stepfather as well. So he's got like I always say, like at the PTA meetings or like all the back to school conferences, it's like five people because both the sets of parents come and his grandma comes a lot of times. So he always has a lot of parental support at everything, but it's good, it's nice, and luckily we're in. You know, we have the type of relationship with his mom and stepfather that we can be comfortable like co-parenting in certain situations, which I think is really important. At the end of the day we know that we're all just there to love him and support him. And I know, I think also one of the best things or nicest compliments I got was when his mom said to us, I don't know what it is that we're all doing, but we're doing something right because he's a really good kid. And I was like, oh, you included me. <laughs> like, that made me feel really good because I was like, oh, I feel so validated. Like, I agree. <laughs> we're doing a good job at parenting. Yeah, I think that <clears throat> is definitely something that's really nice because in a lot of situations with step parents like you get a lot of pettiness from the exes or whatever right. and I do think that it's really nice that she's very supportive of you guys and of him just spending he spends a lot of time with our whole family and she's right. very supportive and like understanding of that and also knows that like 
he loves it, you know, and that, and she can see, like, oh, he's just getting benefits out of this. Like, right. it's not hurting my child to have more people love him. And I think that's definitely, that's just what it comes down to. At the end of the day, you just want to work towards whatever's best for that child. And if you are in a situation where you're divorced or you, you know, your ex has remarried, that's not important to that child. Like, I mean, it's important in regards of, like, their family dynamic, but your relationship shouldn't try to control how your child feels towards their other parent because that's just unfair to them, I think. I think it's very hard. And, you know, I was a single mom when my kids were, when you guys were really little. Mm-hmm. So Renee was two and Jess was four and Joe was five when my husband, my first husband and I separated. And it was tough. And it was tough to not play the, oh, he's such a terrible person game. But I really tried not to do that because he's still their father. And I also felt that, you know, knowing the way that he was, he was going to show his true colors uh, at some point in time. But in the end, it's better. You don't want to tell your kid that the person that is is their parent is a bad person because it's going to be reflective on them, too. So I think it's really important. But I also know it's incredibly stressful to be alone with, you know, three young children most of the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, you know, I think that going through that and then becoming a stepmom it's it's hard too because you're in that position where you're not the parent but you have to parent right. and you have to and my husband traveled a lot when when David lived with us and so I was you know I had to be the primary parent a lot of the time because he was away basically every other week and so you know it was a it was an interesting dynamic and you know it's a tough it's at 15 and 16 those are tough ages for you mm-hmm. know for kids Tough yeah, transition. Of course. Yeah, and especially with that, you know, step parenting, I think we probably at some point will do more of a conversation on it. But I think it is one of the hardest jobs in the world because there's so much to navigate. And, you know, you try to do what's best for the child and you try not to overstep because you recognize, I, you know, I just dread the day when my son says to me, well, you're not my mom. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me what to do. You're not my mom. Right. And it's like, Yes, I know that, and I'm not trying to be your mom, but I am your stepmom, and I do love you, and I care about you, and I only want what's best for you, and I've supported you through most of your life, <laughs> like for right, him, right. at least, you know, like through the majority of your life, and even if I'm not your mom, I'm, a, I'm an adult who loves and cares about you, and I feel that you should respect my my wishes and my desires for you, as long as, you know, they're not crossing the line, which, but it is a very hard, it's a very delicate line, because you don't want to overstep, you don't want to go against anything that they're true biological parent has set forth as the rules and yeah that's just definitely the day that I dread hearing that (laughs) which I feel like I'm sure it will happen and I think hopefully ultimately you know my son will recognize that I love him and that I've have done as much as I can for him so that I know one day but I do I'm always like oh is that day ever gonna happen where he's like throws that one at me, I know that's going to hit me hard. Um, yeah, it's probably going to happen. <laughs> no, yeah. when it so does, good. Like, even when it does, like, I know <laughs> that his mom is going to basically be like, stop that nonsense. Right. And she's going to be like, no, that person isn't, like, an amazing person for you. And right. she wouldn't even, because, like, a lot of the exes or the other parents, like, they would, especially because you're a lot younger than she is, they would right. say, like, yeah. And, like, yeah, they kind, kind of agree. And they that. would be like, haha, finally. Like, because they feel jealousy or something. But it's like... Right. She's not like that, it seems like. So I feel like if he ever does have those kinds of feelings, even she's going to say she's not going to be supportive right. of it. So And, of course, it's like ultimately I, I just try not to take those types of things personally. <laughs> yeah. It's just, right. It is really I mean, hard. It's hard, but it's – yes, you have to put on a brave face and turn around and go cry in your room. Yeah, but, you know. and then that's true even with your own biological children. Like sure. there's periods where, to be frank, kids can be real jerks sometimes. Yeah. Like they can be really mean to you. And, you know, even with – as we said, we have our loose definition of parenting. So we used to spend a lot of time with our little cousins and we would, you know, babysit them for long periods of time. And our one cousin, you know, we'd pick her up from preschool and we're just like, oh, how was your day? She's like, God, why do you always ask me that? And I'm like, because I care about you and I want to know how your day was. And she's like, that's ah, so annoying. And I'm like, you're three. Why are you so angry at me? Like, I'm just curious. And then one time Jess was texting me from the park and she's like, Oh my God, she's being really mean. She did this and this. She's like, I feel like I'm gonna cry. And I'm like, Jess, she's four. <laughs> like, you need to just relax. <laughs> I cry a lot, as we already stated. I'm like, just don't let her see your weakness. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, put on the brave face. No, but that's definitely true. That happens so, a lot. what makes a great parent? 
you kind of touched on this um, makes a great parent. when you commented on our Facebook question. I, I think it's unconditional love. I think you have to love your kids no matter what they're doing. And, you know, again, you don't have to love the behavior, but you love your kids and they know that. You give them a solid grounding and they know that they always have somebody that they can count on. And I think that that is the most important thing you can do. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> like, um, and you kind of touched on it just now. Renee and I were talking last night and I was saying that um, I had just gone to a conference for camps and one of the sessions I was in, she had a quote up that was something like, children who don't feel loved at home will seek love at school or camp or wherever they go. And um, she said, notice it doesn't say children who aren't loved at home. It says children who don't feel loved. So you kind of did touch on it like, I think most parents probably do unconditionally love their kids or at least somewhat. But if your kid doesn't know that and it's not clear that your love is unconditional, then it kind of just totally negates the fact that it's there. Right. Because, and it's a simple thing as like, there's so, you would be surprised, but there's so many kids who think if I don't get straight A's, my parents aren't going to love me. Or if I don't make the baseball team, my parents aren't going to love me. And they literally think that. And how sad is that? That a kid is like thinking that their parents' love is based upon these like kind of Jeez. really... <clears throat> Not important things. Yeah. Um, Especially like, oh, you didn't get to baseball when you were 15? Yeah. Like, okay. And it reminds me of that Alanis Morissette song from Jagged Little Pill. It's called Perfect. And the, I think the end of the song is like, I'll always love you as long as you're perfect. Yeah. So I'm like, hmm, interesting. But I agree that like the unconditional love is definitely, you modeled that for us. And like that helped us to become like confident in ourselves in the sense of like, having conviction in our values and standing up for what we believe in and being okay being ourselves. And we've kind of, that's, I think, the tool that we use that makes us so effective when working with children. Right, like I was going to say that. You know, we've had experiences working with children where there's been, for one example that always stands out to me was this young girl we had in our kinder pre-K kinder app program. And she was very quiet, very, very shy. Um, to the point where she wouldn't even ask to use the bathroom, so she'd wet her pants, you know. And she was she was toilet trained, but she would just be so, so intimidated. And even just after spending, I think, like a month or two with us in the program, she got to the point where she was talking, she was so funny, she would always be, like, chatting and telling us stories and singing along with things, and, like, she was going to star in our play eventually. And we would drop her at pre-K, and the teachers at pre-K would be like, oh, she talks to you? They're like, oh, we thought she, we thought something was wrong with her. We didn't think she could talk. And I'm like, I just don't think she likes you guys. <laughs> <laughs> because, and that's really what it comes down to is when you give kids that safe environment of knowing this isn't a place where we're judging you. This isn't a place where we're evaluating you based on what you can and can't do. Like, we're just here to help you and we just, you know, we're fun and we're open and we love you. And they feel that support and it really doesn't take very long for most kids to open up. And it's pretty, it's like a really beautiful thing to see happen. And it's also something that we do with, like, honestly, just anyone we meet. So, oh, our yes. friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just You're like, thinking about freaks. But, no, like, it's our even. friends, like, they're just like, oh, you're so open and you make me feel, and you make us feel so comfortable. And, like, we, we can just be ourselves and, like, they, we can develop, like, quick friendships that are truly deep and meaningful because we are open and because we're very, like, accepting and, like, we allow people to be themselves and feel comfortable right. being themselves. And we're so goofy and crazy that... Yeah, they're going to look normal. Yeah, I'm like, it, anyway. I'm like, you could be the you're the weirdest you you can be and you're still not going to be as weird as us, so don't worry about it. <laughs> there will still be weirder freaks in the room. <laughs> Which also leads me to, like, you, you have to have fun, too. So right. I can remember, like, the time that we were on, at Six Flags and we were on the... The big wheel, and we were singing. Um, yeah. I will I survive, will survive. Yeah. as loudly as we could after the replacements came out. So, yeah. But you know, stuff like that. Like, or, we talked about that movie. Yeah, I mean, just yeah, it's a funny movie. <laughs> uh, just have fun, you know, and that's really important too. Is is do things that are that are fun together as a family. And you know, we used to do right. game night, and you know, we just that. Was and fun also, for us. I think a lot of it too is like pay attention to what's important to your kid and try your best to be involved in it. Because right. especially nowadays with, like, all technology and cell phones and everything, it's so easy to just get distracted by your phone. But trying to take even just 15 minutes a day to just engage one-on-one -on -one with your kid and just really talk to them and let them tell you about something that interests them. Because that is where you're going to get that bond. Mm -hmm. And to, you know, along with the unconditional love, is really helping them explore 
and pursue their own goals. So right. trying not to put forth your desires onto them as far as what you want them to be, but really trying to foster their passions and, and show them like a path. And I know a lot of times, you know, you want your child to have a practical job or something that they can depend on, which is totally fine, but you can maybe try to find something if they're super artistic, steer them towards a career in the arts, you know, or try to make sure they have a way to express that particular passion because that's just going to foster a better relationship, I believe. I agree. Exactly. All right. So anything else on that realm or do we want to move into like some parenting fails? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Parenting fails, I guess. Mom? I'm... I guess we should say how she failed us. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> better. That's probably better. No. Um, I, mean, I, you know, I would lose my temper and I would do some things that I'm, you know, not very proud of. I mean, hmm. you know, I stopped the car and kicked my kid out on the side of the road one made time. Made him run. I made him run after the car. That was, I was pretty mad. Um, I think. He ran fast. He did. The fastest well, he, guy ever ran in his whole life. Um, While most, crying. Most of it was. Being, you know, was losing my temper. And I think that that's just, you know, especially when, again, when you're a single mom and you're just under a lot of stress, it, it's, um, or any parent, you know, but you, but you, you just need that. Make you sure didn't you really have the emotional time. outlet. Like, you right. didn't have the time to be like, oh, I just need to, like, go away and cry. So we were always there. <laughs> Probably one of, the, one of the funniest, and it turned out okay, but uh, Joe had appendicitis when he was five, and so he kept telling me that his belly hurt, and, like, he, I thought he had to go to the bathroom and he, you know, I, I kept saying to him, if you just go to the bathroom, you'll feel better. And he came out and he's like, I, I really, you know, mom, I tried. I really couldn't go. I really don't feel good. I go to, I said, all right, I'm taking you to the doctor, but you know, I really, I'm really busy today. And I, you know, this better be serious. And <laughs> it turned out to be appendicitis. So I felt pretty bad because pooping does not cure appendicitis. So mm-hmm. Wait, I have a question about that though, because we had to come up here to go to the doctor, right? So it was like an hour and a half away or something, right? Yeah. Two hours at the time. Well, we actually, our doctor was actually in Newton, but I wanted oh. to go to Overlook Hospital, so. So we did come up here. It we was did. pre pre shortcut though, so it was what, two hours? How long it did it was, take? Uh, yeah, an hour and a half, roughly. Okay. So were we already planning on coming up here like to visit Nana, or you literally just brought him up to the hospital? I literally brought him up to the hospital. Okay. Because, like, we, I feel like we were in the car and you were, like, go back inside and try to poop. Or maybe that... No, that happened in the house. That happened in oh, the house. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. I was trying to remember. I don't remember it. I was yeah. young. Okay. I was a baby. Yeah. yeah. So. so, basically, Joe had his appendix out and he was showing everyone his scar. And that's when Renee asked if she had ever had surgery. I guess... Okay, here's my other parent parents. fail. <laughs> yeah. And then I was told, yes, I had had my brain removed. When I was younger. So then I would go up to people and say, oh, um, my mom said I had my brain removed. Did it hurt? (laughs) Because no one would tell me, like, does that surgery hurt? I don't know. Yeah. And then we told her no, because if you don't have a brain, you can't feel pain. (laughs) That's probably why she doesn't feel anything now. Yeah, you probably removed the emotional center of my brain. You are what turned me into a bone-crushing, heartless... (laughs) Murderer. <laughs> a murderer. No, um, murderer yeah, that was that was murderer actually not my, not one of my best moments. Same, so. like my husband and I tell our son that he's a robot and that we built him, and he really doesn't like it. But we still say it sometimes, and he's like, "Don't say that. I'm not a robot." So we'll say, "Like oh, it's time for your update," and we'll be like, do behind his back. And he's like, "I'm not a robot. It's not funny. Stop." I'm like. So funny. <laughs> See, we we try to stop because he if he gets really upset about yeah. it, he's gonna like short circuit. So. You have to get... <laughs> yeah, like I always, I'm like, what, what kind of pants are you wearing? And he's like, they're not dancey. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, those look like dancey pants. He's like, they're just pants. <laughs> they're just regular plain pants. <laughs> Actually, one time he's on uh, your games. We were at the. Um, <laughs> I was at CVS with my cousin, the same one who almost made me cry. She was, like, four. And um, some song came on, and she was like, ooh, I love this song. And then I, like, looked at her really excitedly, and she just, like, dropped her face, and she's like, it's not my jam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's your catchphrase. Like, that's, that's your jam. Your jam. She's that's like, a jam. It's not my jam. <laughs> yeah, especially if you give me the weirdest songs as my jam. I'm like, I've heard this song once in my life. How is this qualifying as my jam? <laughs> If you like it, it's your jam. It's one of your jams. So do you have other parenting fails that you would like to tell me about? From you? Of your parenting? Yeah. I mean, 
It's also just so different. I, I feel know. like parenting is so different now. I mean, I think maybe the only like parenting fail. Well, I always didn't just like the time you locked us out of the house <laughs> when we were like little kids. <laughs> I didn't lock you out of the yeah, house. Yeah, you did in Montague. You were like mad at us, and so you locked <laughs> us out of the house. And then for some reason, we didn't just go like play. Like we usually just played outside. We were like banging on the door. We're like let us in, and you like left us out there. Probably only like twenty minutes, but felt like a long time because we were kids. I was probably I like really five. Remember. I mean, I vaguely remember that. I don't. Also, you lost me a lot. <laughs> under my bed, under the dog. Yeah, well, I had three, so it was hard to keep the track spare. of the third one. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't I also lose let me. you chew on a Also at the later. beach, you lost me at the beach. <laughs> but then you got to ride no, on the ATV. That was my fault. The... I'm sorry. She did leave me in charge of her. I mean, I was four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were probably seven. seven, and I was five. Okay, I was seven, but I was supposed to watch her, and I loved her. And then I got rescued by the lifeguards, and I got to ride around on their little beach thing. And then they all knew me, because it took you like an hour and a half to look for me. <laughs> that is not true. That is not true. By the time she came to look for me, every lifeguard in all of Seaside knew who I was. They actually did. I, I walked up to the lifeguard stand and said, have you seen a small blonde girl? And they said, do you mean Renee? And I was like, oh, that's really embarrassing. You're like, that's the one. <laughs> also, in fairness, so when Renee and I were preschool teachers, um... We always tried to follow the schedule, and if we were supposed to go to the park, like, sometimes we wouldn't really have time, and I said, okay, guys, even if we go to the park for literally one minute, it's worth it, because these kids don't really know how to tell time, and they'll say to their parents, we were only at the park for one minute, and their parents will be like, okay, honey, like, <laughs> we were there for an hour, and we're like, no, it was really a minute, but whatever. <laughs> We know that or you're like not when you gonna trust your kids leave a kid cage. at the pool and forget to pick them up from their swim lesson, and then you're like, it was five minutes, and they're like, oh, I was there for twenty five <laughs> minutes, and you're like, oh, yeah, they really were. No, there was one time, and this we were not in charge of this, but basically, it was a trip week, and the kids were planning on going to like a state park. And the way that they were sending them was this little bridge that buses are not allowed to go on, and there was another way that was like broken down or like something so then the bus had to pull over on the side of the road so all the kids could like pee like in the field <laughs> in a field and they were just like in a field next to the road and they were like eating their lunch there and they ultimately did nothing and it, they were like on the bus for like five hours or something it was a crazy field trip and then this kid comes um gets picked up and he tells his mom we're on the bus for like five hours and then you know renee pr spins it in some way and <laughs> like oh you got an email about it and the mom's like oh okay and she definitely thought her son was exa- exaggerating but if anything he was actually underestimating how long they were on <laughs> yeah. the bus yeah but, so trust your kids uh. <laughs> well, but my point was, you're probably miss. You probably are misgaging. No, time. I'm sure you it probably wasn't weren't that long. lost for an hour at the beach because who knows? Yeah, <laughs> who knows? Honestly, I couldn't tell time. There's no clocks around. <laughs> yeah, I looked at the I sun. Think, I guess other um, parenting fails. The only the one I would say for mom isn't so much a fail, but she obviously worked a lot. So there were many days we were latchkey kids. We were home alone a lot. Yeah. So you know she would like give us punishments, and we were like. Poof! Yeah. She's like, you can't watch TV. We're like, totally. She put, she tape a sign on top of the TV. No, Joe was the we one. We just flipped that Joe bad was the boy one up. who always tattled. And we're like, you traitor. Like, he was the one who was like, always like telling because us. Because he would people. tattle when he did something bad and then he needed leverage. He'd be like, mommy, I love you. And Jess and Renee watched TV when they weren't supposed to. <laughs> and it's like, oh, thanks, Joe. Now we're all in trouble. <laughs> yeah. But that would be probably the only one, really. So the major one, I then, would say. By ineffectual punishments? Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like we never really had punishments anyway. Yeah, we didn't really get I mean, punished I pretty much, much. Maybe we a little bit too want. permissive, but ultimately I think it turned out okay. So. Pretty good. And you have, like, one successful child. So. <laughs> one and a half. I have it. David. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Two successful um, children. Anyway, so. Two out of five, 40 One of my, like, rate. pet peeves, I guess, with parenting. Oh, wait. Oh, no, we don't have a song for pet peeves. No. Nope. We only had the popcorn. I have pet peeves, though. <laughs> we don't have a lot of time. I know. So we're, like, reel it in. But I have one that I was talking about yesterday with Renee. And it's, like, parents, the fact that they're so, like, nonchalant about parenting. And I don't mean, like, being an easygoing parent, because I think that's probably a good way to parent. Like, not to be, like, super... High strung. High strung about stuff. But it's, like, they don't have any intention in their parenting. And I'm, like, they just are always, like, whatever. They'll turn out fine. And it's good much like what we're never saying before. It's, like, don't you want your kid to be better than fine? And wouldn't you want to, like, Renee had written in the post that she put up this week. There are, like, thousands of books on parenting. And there are, there's research done. And there's, like, 
experts in the field who are basically giving you a guide for best practices in parenting. And I just don't really understand parents who don't at least try and who are just like, whatever. Like, to me, it's so weird. It's like, this is like the most important job you're ever going to have. And you're literally responsible for forming a human. You might as well want to put a little bit of effort into it and at least try to do your best. Especially, I think, when it comes... It's hard sometimes with, like, only children or firstborns, right? Because it's very hard to establish boundaries a lot of times because it's really easy to just do whatever baby wants. You right. know, so baby wants to play this, and baby wants to play this. So they don't necessarily have to learn about don't put baby in compromise. <laughs> <laughs> so that is very hard. And then I see parents, like, when their kid is four or five, being like, oh, my God. They don't... They don't... Like, they just expect them to suddenly know rules and manners without having been taught rules and manners their whole life. I'm like, you need to set those boundaries. You need to explain to your kid. If you don't want your kid to be like the crazy kid walking on people's couches and like rudely snatching things away from them, you have to tell them, we don't walk on couches. We don't grab things out of people's hands, you know? So that's, it's, then they just seem so surprised. They're like, oh my God, he doesn't know how to use manners. I'm like, when it comes to training your small child about manners, it's pretty much classical conditioning. You just have to, yeah. Train them to do it. Literally training. It's not really I mean, parenting. You just say, this is what you say. When you receive something, you say this. Or if you don't say, ask me in a nice way, I'm not going to do this thing right. for you. If you don't ask me nicely to open your juice, I'm not opening it. And guess what? Then you're not having juice because you can't open it, you little weakling. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's also, like, there. yeah, there are a lot of things that children need explicit instruction on. And what I always say to people is, I can't believe you let your kid talk to you this way. Right. If Would you let another adult talk to you like that? Like, give me that. Go get me this. I'm like, ew, no. That's so thing rude. Is, the thing is, some of the parents do talk like that. And it's that's like, true. that's the other thing. is, It's like, right. if you're a jerk, there's a 95% chance your child's going to be a jerk. Right? Because, <laughs> I mean, true. you're true. raising that child. So. Yeah, so it is, obviously, it comes down to modeling. But to me, with manners, I just feel like it's not that hard to teach your kid manners. It just takes consistency and modeling, like you said. I think it, that my parenting pet peeve is, have you heard of Velcro parents? So they take helicopter helicopter parents one step further because the kids are like literally velcro to them. Okay. So our experience is like parents want to come to their kids' job interviews. Right. Mm-hmm. And or call parents their kids want to job. come and talk to the kids' jobs about their performance. And okay, maybe even if they're in high school, although it's still inappropriate, but I'm talking about in co- after college mm-hmm. and into like their first real job in the world and they're they're like I, you know, they feel maybe they, they weren't there enough and, you know, so now they need to be there to kind of control that, but right. you've got to take a step back and, and, you know, yeah, that's let your yeah. kids, but, but it happens yeah. and it's not infrequent. You. Cause yeah. even with the helicopter parenting, like I remember, I remember we, I was reading an article that was about helicopter parenting and it was saying things like, stop always telling your kid to be careful. Like if your kid's under a table, you don't have to tell them every single time to be careful not to bump their head. You know, when they're a little older, when they're a little baby, maybe. So I remember reading that article, and I was like, okay, i got to try this because I'm very guilty of that. So we were then, later that week, camping, family camping, and Finn was walking on this log. And my natural instinct was to be like, be careful on that log. And I squashed it down, and I didn't say it. (laughs) It was very hard. And then, of course, naturally, he fell off the log. But then he kind of just looked at me, you know, deciding how he should react, and I was like, Sometimes when we walk on logs, we fall off. (laughs) Are you okay? He's like, yeah. I was like, all right, let's go. And then we just kept going, and it wasn't a thing. Like, it was fine. And so he was able to have that experience of learning from walking on the log. He fell. He didn't get hurt. He was fine. We moved on with our lives. Yeah. You know, and and it wasn't like he was walking on a high wire. Right. (laughs) You know, he was walking on a log, and it's okay if your kid falls a little and gets hurt. And it's okay if your kid fails a test. It's okay if your kid messes up, but then you need to teach them how to move forward from that. If right. you just do it for them, then they're never going to learn anything. They're not going to be productive members of the of society. And that's also why kids today have really high rates of anxiety, depression, because they don't have coping skills. It's very important to raise resilient kids. Yeah. And the only way that you can be resilient is to try and fail. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So that's, that's definitely, I would say, my parenting pet peeve is helicopter parents. And I get the urge. I get it. You want your kids to not suffer. You want to give them the best that they can have. And but it's just important for them to learn that you're not always going to fix their problems for them. Yeah. Another thing I was thinking about when you were talking about the manners is it also depends sometimes on what parents consider important. Like an example of this is um, 
Momily and Renee and I are super duper strict about getting sand on the beach blanket. <laughs> and, um, That's true. <laughs> but even just to teach Finn, like, it's rude to run around other people's blankets because you're kicking stuff potentially even in their face. Like, some people yeah. are just laying on their blankets, and if you're running around them, like, you're kicking sand on them. But even on our own blanket, we're like, don't put your feet on it. Like, um, or, like, sit down, wipe the sand off your feet, then put them on a blanket. And I know <laughs> Renee's husband is always like, who cares? It's just a little sand. And we're like, we care. We're like, we don't like sand on our bodies at the beach. <laughs> no, but of course. I yeah. mean, with the running thing, it's obviously, yeah, you don't want to, like, be kicking sand in people's face, but. But even with just getting on the blanket, we're like, no sand on the blanket. And then Tim's like, relax. And we're like, <laughs> we're like here's So relax. now we just say, oh, here's your blanket. It's over <laughs> here. It's a sandy one. <laughs> we'll be on this pristine blanket. <laughs> No, but, I mean, you learn, and you learn to compromise, and it's definitely interesting in the step-parenting relationship, because you're with someone who's already established a parenting style, and then you, like, come in, you add your two cents, but you're like, well, can't fully decide. Yeah. So, it's an, it's an interesting I think it's compromise. different, though, for you, because you're a step-parent who was has not been a parent yet. Yet, yeah. So, it, that is a different dynamic than being a step-parent who already has children. Right, yeah. That's true. That's true. That must be trickier. All right, so, is there anything else... Because I think we're pretty much wrapping up that no, anyone else wants that's... to say. No, I'm sure there's a million parenting fails and wins that I forgot about, but I feel like we'll cover some more of this at other times. Oh, because we didn't even talk about any of our crazy childcare stories. Yeah. Did so we'll wanna... have to save those. Okay. Yeah. So basically, um, Renee and I had an idea for its own entire book slash podcast slash brand called In Loco Parentis, and it's kind <laughs> of a play on the... Um, Whatever, the legal principle that when you're watching someone else's kids, you're acting as their legal parent. Um, but then also the loco for the Spanish of crazy. <laughs> so it's crazy stories from childcare. So basically we'll kind of start incorporating that into our episodes. Like maybe we'll find some stories that pertain <laughs> or don't. You I know, was thinking menstrual you know mishaps, but apparently that's too gross and we can't have an episode about that. I'm just saying... <laughs> I know, people are very squeamish about period. Blood, I'm not saying like, it's fine to normalize periods. I just personally don't feel the need to talk about my menstrual cycle that frequently. Okay. Well, <laughs> just personally. I don't have a problem with it for others. I just personally don't feel the need to share. Okay. All right, so next week. So I just wanted to add, oh. sorry, last thing, that um, I do think that Momly is the best mom ever. Best Thank you. Mom. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, little Wait, are you going to sing the song that you wrote about her? No, I don't even remember it. Oh. Anyway, also, I was going to say <laughs> something. Yeah. Mom is the best mom ever. I don't remember. Okay. Oh, is oh I was going to say, we were going to see a movie this week, but we didn't because Mom has bronchitis. Maybe. Cough for them. No. Just no. <laughs> <laughs> she already did earlier. You probably heard. Sorry. <laughs> um, and yeah, then Renee and I were too tired. Okay. So no movies this week. So next week we're going to be talking about book club. Oh. The truth <laughs> behind book club. Your wife says she's going to talk about her favorite books. What's really going on? You'll find out. Tune in next week for the solving. For something. For the mystery solving. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Okay. So if you want to get in touch with us, um, check us out on DearFootSisters.com. Facebook.com slash Deerfeet Podcast. Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube are Deerfoot Sisters and Deerfoot Sisters at gmail.com. We got Mommily, Renee, and Jess. And we're Prancing, Prancing away. away. Here we go. <laughs>